For the two whole days since this phone was announced, we were convinced that we finally got the Poco phone that is not Redmi under a different name and brand and that this would be the step towards separating the Poco and its parent Xiaomi into two separate entities. But on the last day of September, Xiaomi had its world premiere, which introduced the Mi 10T series phones with the light version that irresistibly resembles the Poco X3, with only a few minor differences. It seems that we will have to wait a little longer for the Poco to become a truly separate brand. And until then, let's see how the Poco X3 performs in our tests. There is no better way to shake up the market than to offer a product with flagship characteristics at a fraction of a price. And while the first Poco phone was justifiably named the flagship killer, it was difficult for the subsequent models to justify that name. With the Poco X3, the situation quite changes up a bit. The main feature of the new Poco X3 phone is the large Full HD Plus IPS screen with a size of 6.67 inches, a refresh rate of 120Hz and 450 nits of brightness. The phone runs a new Snapdragon 732G octa-core chipset optimized for gaming and there is 6GB of RAM and 64 or 128GB of storage respectively with an expansion slot that is shared between the microSD and a nano SIM card. The rear camera system consists of 64, 13 and two 2 megapixel sensors with 20 megapixel front camera placed inside a punch hole in the middle of the upper part of the screen. The battery is huge at an impressive 5160mAh and you will also get a 33 watt charger inside the package. With a large screen and unobtrusive bezels on all four sides, the Poco X3 is one big phone. But hey, it's 2020, very few phones aren't these days. We're slowly approaching tablet-sized screens, so it's only a matter of time before 7-inch phones become the norm. For now, 6.67-inch screens still fit the pocket of men's jeans without too much problems, unless you're wearing some skin-tight jeans. If I'm not mistaken, this might be fourth or fifth time in a row that we get a Xiaomi phone with this screen size. The polycarbonate back has a specific texture, is slightly curved and has a large Paco logo in the middle of the lower half of the phone. The camera enclosure is unusually shaped with sensors placed in the form of the letter X. The center lens is ultra wide lens one LED flash and the main camera are at the top row while the macro lens and depth sensor are at the bottom. The camera system sticks out quite a bit but due to its width, the phone does not rock when you place it on the table or some other flat surface. The silicone case that comes with the phone does not level the back with the cameras but protects it with a protruding circular frame, ideal for collecting dirt on the parts above and below the camera. Stereo speakers are something we do not often see, even on expensive phones, so the Poco X3 pleasantly surprised that in that regard. The headset speaker also doubles as a second speaker, but unlike the solution seen so far, its sound quality and volume are not far behind the speakers at the bottom. This is further enhanced by the wide sound holes of the handset, as well as additional holes on the top, such as on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. The sound is very loud, which gamers will especially appreciate, while the sound quality is mediocre with pronounced low and high tones and a clear lack of good part of the middle part of the spectrum. The top also features an infrared blaster as well as a secondary microphone, while the primary microphone, main speaker and a USB 2.0 Type-C are on the bottom, along a 3.5mm headphone jack, always a welcome option for all of those who have been investing in quality wired headphones for years. The fingerprint sensor is integrated into the power key and is always active, so there is no need to press the key to unlock the phone, though you will need to press it in order to lock it. The IPS screen has the common Full HD Plus resolution with 20 to 9 aspect ratio and a 2400x1080 pixel resolution, which on an active surface of 107.4 squared centimeters gives a density of an excellent 395 pixels per inch. The screen protrudes quite beyond the metal frame of the phone and protected by the Gorilla Glass 5 layer and a removable polycarbonate foil. The screen comes with an HDR10 support that enhances contrast and color when watching HDR10 content and there is also 120Hz refresh rate for fast games and smooth displays of dynamic content. 
I'm going to be honest with you, I really didn't expect 120 hertz refresh rate in this price range. The screen refresh rate is dynamic, so the phone will switch to 60 hertz when you are viewing a still image in order to conserve battery power when it really doesn't make sense to use a high refresh rate. Unlike the refresh rate, touch detection operates at 240 hertz, which is very important in games where speed is a crucial factor, such as racing and shooters. So it's clear in which direction the Poco X3 is moving and which audience it's aimed for with its capabilities. We also have to praise the backlight brightness and the excellent black level that together enable a very high contrast which will mean a lot on a bright day or when a light source hits the screen. The IPS panel allows for precise color and the settings allow you to switch between the default mode that adopts according to ambient light and saturated standard modes that have a static contrast. Instead of an excellent Snapdragon 730 chipset, the new Paco comes with the freshly boosted gaming variant called the 732G. Directly from Samsung's factory, the Snapdragon 732G comes with 100 MHz higher clock speed on a faster set of A76 cores that now run at 2.3 GHz and slightly faster Adreno 618 graphics that offer 15% better performance. The optimized wireless connection should also be emphasized, which ensures stability and prioritizes network traffic during games in order to reduce delays. Paco X3 comes with 6GB of LPDDR4X memory and 64 or 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage, which can be further expanded if you're willing to sacrifice the second nano SIM slot. There is also NFC, in case the name of this version of the phone did not make it clear enough, as well as Bluetooth 5.1 and GPS with support for all popular geolocation systems. Thanks to the 3.5mm slot, there is also an FM tuner which can also record the radio program, which is not a common thing to see in 2020. The humongous 5160mAh battery is one of the reasons why the Paco X3 is almost 9.5mm thick. If this doesn't bother you too much, keep in mind that thanks to the large battery and optimized chipset, you will easily get through two two and a half days of use when the screen is running at 120 hertz refresh rate. Large batteries also require powerful chargers, so the Paco X3 comes with a 33 watt adapter in the package, which is supposed to charge the phone up to 62% in 30 minutes and 100% in 75 minutes. Four cameras in 2020 seem to be the bare minimum for any new phone. Not so much because you need them, but because users will probably wonder why it has less than other phones. However, the Paco X3 makes good use of all four sensors, depending on the shooting conditions that you may want to achieve. The main sensor of the phone was introduced almost a year ago, and it's a 64 megapixel Sony IMX686, the successor of the ultra popular 48 megapixel IMX586. Compared to its predecessor, the new sensor is significantly larger, but the increase in resolution makes for the same physical pixel size, which remained at 0.8 micrometers or 1.6 micrometers if you count in the pixel binning. Not to go into details about the technology, we will note that Sony's quad buyer sensors group the adjacent pixels, two green, red and blue, to increase photo sensitivity, especially in low light conditions. Since this process is done via software, we must note that noise reduction largely depends on good algorithms that create the final image, so it's often the case that two phones with the same sensor can get completely different results. In this case, the 64 megapixel sensor lies behind a lens with an aperture of f1.9 with phase detection autofocus. The ultra wide sensor features 13 megapixel, an aperture of f2.2, 1 micrometer pixel size, an effective angle of 119 degrees, and fixed focus. The 2 megapixel macro camera also has a fixed focus at about 4 to 5 centimeters and the aperture of f2.4. A 2 megapixel depth sensor is also present to help the processing algorithms better separate the characters from the background and create the artificial bokeh effect. The front camera has a 20 megapixels fixed focus and aperture of f2.2. The selfie camera is a pleasant surprise. The high resolution of the sensor creates sharp photos with a lot of detail good colors and dynamic range, which is especially important where there is a great contrast between you and the background. The camera focus is tuned to arm's length, so unless you place the phone on the table, turn on the timer and move away, the images will be focused well. 
There's also a portrait mode which will have minor problems detecting your contour in case your hair is messy, but generally it does a job very well. The main sensor we talked about so much was conceived as a replacement for the popular 48 megapixel version, and when it appeared, a direct comparison showed that the differences, except for the resolution, are quite small. The images will be created at 16 megapixel by default, and the quality is excellent in daylight and very good in low light conditions. Daytime photos are very sharp with a lot of details, great dynamic range, and natural colors with perhaps a slightly warmer white balance. HDR mode provides much more vivid colors, so we recommend trying few photos with and without to see what looks best for you. Noise reduction is not too aggressive, so if you don't zoom in on the maximum, you won't even notice it. The depth sensor does a job separating the subject from the background very well, and the software creates fine blurs for the nights of depth of field effect. As this is the only lens with the autofocus, we will mention that the phase detection autofocus works great. It's very fast and does not lose focus during video recording, which is extremely important. The two times zoom option available from the camera menu is digital and not very useful, but if you really want to zoom in, we recommend definitely switching to full sensor resolution, as this will give you much more detailed image even after cropping the part you want to enlarge. Another option, 06 times, takes you to an ultra-wide angle camera. We already encountered similar sensors we said many times that those images are very good, with good dynamic range and a lot of details. The colors are a bit different and less vibrant compared to the main sensor, which is to be expected, and the lens correction does a job decently, so there is not much distortion of the edges of the frame. Although it has 2 megapixels, macro lens makes pretty good photos, which are detailed enough. The only complaint is that in order to activate the macro mode, you have to click on the main camera setting and select the macro option, which is tucked away where you don't expect it, instead of being able to select it among other modes such as night photos, panorama, and so much more. To make things even more annoying, the AI doesn't suggest macro mode automatically when you get too close to an object. We're generally satisfied with the macro photos. The focus is fixed, so you need to move the phone around a bit to get a sharp focus and enough light. Light is a necessary factor for macro photography, so due to the limitation of this camera, don't even try to take the photos in low light, because they will be blurry with too much noise. With enough light, it is a very useful camera with which you will be able to easily capture interesting small details and tiny objects. Night photos are only really good with the main sensor, which is the only one that comes with the night mode. The ultra-wide angle lens is very limited in low light conditions, while the main camera makes pretty good photos. The noise is nicely reduced, there is enough details, and the colors are faithfully reproduced with a tendency to sometimes be bit on the warmer side. Night mode has become very good and software algorithms allow it to get all those details hidden in parts of the scene with less light. As expected, noise is present, but definitely bearable. Video capabilities are limited to 4K shots at 30 frames per second, but 1080p can be shot at 60 FPS and there's 720p at 960 frames per second for those who want to experiment with the ultra slow motion shots. Electronic stabilization does a job well by eliminating much of the camera shake when in motion. Videos have a lot of detail and good dynamic range and colors. The ultra wide camera can also record in 4K with less vibrant colors but still enough detail so you can use it for video when wide angle is needed. In everyday use, the Poco X3 proved to be a very good device. The hardware is fast enough that you won't crave for more performance in newer games and the MIUI 12 has brought several quality of life improvements. The unobtrusive user interface works nicely with 6GB of RAM, so the user won't really think too much about what's under the screen and whether the internal memory is UFS 2.1 or 3.0. The fingerprint sensor is very fast and precise, much better than the variants located below the screen, and by adding your face to the Xiaomi database, you can further speed up the process. You maybe even end up on a billboard in Shenzhen since we haven't paid attention to the end-user license agreement. Extra features such as advanced wireless traffic management, infrared blaster, 3.5mm jack, and a very fast charging make this phone very versatile. If you're considering 2-day battery life, good performance of all camera systems and a 120Hz display, you would expect an X3 to be in a price range of 500 euros. 
Fortunately for the users, and much to the regret of all the competitors, Paco presented a middle-class killer, which realistically offers much more than any similar price model, not in some, but in almost all aspects, which makes it an extremely good purchase. As Xiaomi is not Nvidia, we hope that this will not be a paper launch and then the market will see enough Paco X3 phones so the users can finally enjoy great performance at a very affordable price. With a price tag of $300 for the 664GB version and $320 for the 6128GB variants, these phones are a perfect example of bang for the buck devices. Thank you for watching Bench House, my name is Marco and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing to our channel as well as dropping a like and sharing your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more reviews and I will see you next time.